Welcome to the Immaterial Gamers Podcast. We're not, we're not talking about what will be coming up. We're talking about the here and now. This is the Immaterial Gamers Podcast. Hello. Woo. I am Ryan and I am one of your wonderful, beautiful hosts. Joining with me is the other beautiful host. It's D. Yay. Um, yeah. Because everyone is beautiful. It's a Sunday as we're recording this, as more often than not seems to be the case. Yeah, it does vary a little bit, but... Yeah. yeah, every now and again. But how's it been going this week, D? Um, I can't say I remember much of this week, to be fair. Oof. What would it be like to be in your shoes right now, given the absolute sorry state of the world that's happened in a week? Uh, I... I, I don't know. I've just... I did go out, but... This week, one day of the week, maybe two. I was working five days of the week. Yeah, yeah, back at work and stuff. Yeah, and uh, lovingly using the public transport, it's all fun. I ordered some masks anyway from Mm. uh, Wish, so they'll be here in four to six weeks. (laughs) Oh, can it be over by then? You dope. Mm. But uh, yeah, no... Going around with with the, with the face masks, it's uh it's all interesting. But I mean, if it keeps everything safe, then so be it. Or if it at least sort of reduces issues, and then so be it. Yeah, but, well, uh, these are most of these are going to be animated styles, so like One Piece, Naruto, etc. Ah, see me function over form. Eh. Therefore, a grey generic face mask. mask. Ah. Well, anyway, for great this time. Great. Just like my soul. It's it it is the undefined, uh, you know, it's the undefined part of my character. So uh, yeah. So while we're all sat here, we be we'll try that again. We're going to be moving on to what's being played soon, and then we'll be talking about the news, which the news will entirely consist of us ripping into the PS5. We. Uh, an equal opportunities podcast and when the xbox series x was announced we ripped into that in terms of design and name so it's only fair that no matter how excited we could be about the ps5 we need to rip into that as well but the other thing is like i say this is recorded on sunday it'll be out on tuesday well, and we, uh before it's the, we... it's the beginning of the law tournament this weekend that's where we was. That's where I was at. You were one step ahead of me. Yeah, Friday sees the return of the Immaterial Gamers Fantasy League. Currently, we are, or some of us are, watching the LEC right now because they decided, or the organizers decided, in all their wisdom, to start the, the bloody tournament off with a super week, which given what we need to do to actually prepare a spreadsheet for this damn tournament, annoyed us. Hmm. It may have annoyed me and Martin in particular more, mainly because he's the architect of the damn spreadsheet, and I was the one that uh, sort of told him that there was going to be nine weeks at ten matches apiece, and, well... Yeah, yeah. and then they threw in the uh, week one, week eight, spin ball of 15. Yeah, but, yeah, it's it's bigger. It's going to be bigger. Boulder, there's not four of us taking part in this tournament. There's eight of us. No, there's nine of us. Come on, Ryan, count. And not spoiling anything in terms of the predictions and the results that have happened so far, because I don't really want to give them away until Friday. I'm enjoying it so far. It's unpredictable. It's great. Uh, yeah, you don't. Like, I like predictability. You like unpredictability. The, I, I like... Yeah, I don't... In terms of something like a predictions competition, if people pull away to an early lead because they just expect everything and know what's coming up and then it's just unassailable from there, and that those people who are at the top are people who had experience with the esports scene and, you know, sort of knew what was going to be happening all the way, then, yeah, it'd be boring as God knows what. The thing with this season's... Fantasy League As you is there's All a wide the yeah there's a wide variety there's there are people who play lol but don't do esports there are people who watch the esports and 
or watch esports but not necessarily League of Legends, and there are those who do both and do neither. So yeah. your predictions could you know could be logical, they could be batshit crazy. Well, I know like Andrea and Sapphire is basically I have no idea what like we have no idea what we're well, doing. Yeah, like Sapphire knows League of Legends to an extent. Andrea oh, she knows TFT. Sort of yeah, there's right, which is more experience than Andrea has. True. So, you know, that's that's how that sort of goes along. I mean, we've got, you know, there's, you know, we'll, we'll, let's not spoil who we got in it. In fact, no, let's spoil who we got in it. So, Andrea D. Darius is in there. Duncan, Martin, myself, Stefan, Sapphire, and Terry. And uh, actual results is also there as well. Actual results will be the 100% winner because it's the actual results. Nah, I joke. If actual results doesn't win, then yeah, well, if, yeah. If, if actual results doesn't win, then what the hell was the point of the damn thing? Nah. So uh, yeah, look forward to that on Friday. He'll be he'll be going back into that slot for the next eleven weeks hmm. because eleven or twelve weeks. Ryan isn't fully sure. He doesn't know how long the playoffs will last. But uh, yeah. Nine immaterial gamers enter, one immaterial gamer comes out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, see how that goes. Right, let's move on to what's been played then. What's been played? Uh, okay, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, go on, why not? You offered. So, I'm just doing a little is... tile, so um, I'm easy. Uh, and I'm like I said, I'm watching sort of the LEC while this is going on. So, I have played this week a lot of Warframe, a lot of TFT, and a lot of other stuff. However, something happened yesterday which made me very, very, very excited. I'm gathering were... it's a Persona kind of deal. Yeah, but to rewind on that, there was the PC Gamer PC Gaming Show that was on on Saturday. Okay. And due to the lack of E3 or any mass gathering convention anywhere. A lot of sort of developers had to get creative with how they were going to tease and hype up their... Brands and whatnot. Yeah, and their games and stuff like that. And, you know, there was a lot of stuff that come out of the PC gaming... Uh, the PC gamer PC gaming show. One of them was slightly expected, and that is the announcement of the new entry of the Torchlight games. Okay. Torchlight 3, formerly Torchlight Frontiers, which is now a sort of single-player to party-based um, ARPG as opposed to what Frontiers was going to be, which was going to be an MMO. They oh, okay. sort of scrapped it, and rather than being free-to-play, they just, you know, one premium price for a, a game and basically make it a direct sequel to 1 and 2. So that's that was 1. And that, that you know, we knew that was coming out at some point, and then, yeah, and then it was released. And then and then Sega went, hold my beer. Okay, so yeah, so Sega and Atlas turned around and went, oh, you like Persona, right? You, you've not got a PlayStation, though. No? No? Uh, here you go, Persona 4 Golden, out today, right now. I, but what? Oh, just a curveball. Yeah, there was absolutely no mentioning, or well, at least from what I was aware, but then again, I apparently have a limited sphere of influence when it comes to gaming information. But yeah, out of nowhere, the best Persona game of the franchise Andrea is going to kill me because I said that. She likes the P Persona 5, I think. She, she likes Persona games. She likes Persona 4. The quote that we had in the Discord when I when I said that my true love had appeared on PC was, I am judging you so hard right now. Ooh. Yeah, because... Hmm. Here it is. Uh, yeah, Ryan, I am judging you so hard. Like, Persona 4 Vanilla I could get, maybe... But Golden is such a downgrade from that. Unfortunately, I've never played Persona 4. So I can only go off. So the Personas I have. I have, however, played Persona 3 Portable. For the PSP at the time. Hence the Portable. I think that's the one I played. Yeah. And, you know what? I didn't really fancy that game. The I don't know. Something in it didn't sort of click in terms of the whole life simulator and dungeon so a game at that mm -hmm. time. Persona 4 Golden came out straight in. 
likable characters, nice scenario, a situation where you know a, a, you know a good like SMT basis of absolute wacky storyline. For anyone who has lived under a rock and never experienced the Persona series, they are they what started off as SMT Persona. So there's mm. a series of games called Shin Megami Tensei. There's, that's the ones I'm I'm versed in. It's the Shin Megami Tensei mm. versions. I don't really play Persona that much. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. So they, to 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 go on that, they're basically an RPG series um, where the sort of emphasis in terms of its fighting is exploiting weaknesses and negotiation, yeah. as well as your normal RPG hit um, stuff, take hits, fair. Yeah, some other things in SMT, to be fair. Well, no, no that, that was SMT. It was, it was mm. Persona adds on to that. Because Persona... It's, it's like an expanded universe, almost. Well, Persona games are life simulators. SMT have their own universe. Persona mm. is now their own distinct universe as well. Because I know the characters in... I think they had the jack-o'-lanterns and stuff. Yeah, the, they all use the same mythology, same demons. But in... Yeah, so in... I, I in, do in, want in the jack o lantern not... Yeah, Jack o Lantern is it? The pumpkin head one. Yes, it's Jack o Lantern. I want that as a plushie. I definitely want that as a plushie. But as we were saying, yeah, the SMT distinct in how it works because a lot of a lot of SMT games in the way that you attack is you know generally in RPGs you you attack something they attack you and there's generally like a set mm. uh, a set rotation or they're real time or stuff like that. In SMT, the way that weaknesses work. Is it generally if you can either perform a critical hit on an enemy or you can exploit damage that they are weak to, you you get more turns. The counterbalance on that is that enemies can also exploit your weaknesses and the same follows. Yeah. So that's that's how those those, those games work. You and me we're aware of that, so of everyone else, that's how that works. Persona adds a life simulator to it. And a sort of a, an ingrained storyline onto that. So generally, you will play as a high school student who has been either sent somewhere or has been, you know, sort of, yeah. Generally, they're all, they've all been transferred to a new area. Yeah, um, like a new city or something. Yeah, and, and then, then they somehow end up in the red room. Oh, the red velvet is it not red room? It's, it's just the velvet room. The velvet room is consistent with all of them, but that's you know generally they're involved in something. Different Persona Three. There were a bunch of paranormal investigators that were in the school, trying to deal with what happens to the school at night, well, at night. where it becomes some giant ass tower. Yeah, uh, there was an anime. It's I've watched the anime of Persona Three. Mm. Uh, Generally, a lot of RPGs end up getting their own anime series mm. along with that. Now, um, the Tales games have got OVAs and stuff like that, and you know that's how that works. But um, Persona 4 is one that I got into. You're a, a student in the big city whose parents are very busy and they work abroad for a lot. There was a big thing that they're working abroad for in this that means that you need to go to a new town for a year. So you move to this new city or town of Inaba and you, you make friends with the locals, as you do. At the same time, a serial killer is going around pushing people in TVs and that when they die, they end up hanging upside down upon the structures of this rural area of Japan. Yeah, because, yeah, that's the other the day and night cycles and going to school and interactions and stuff. The yeah, that's, stuff. That's, that's the whole sort of life simulator thing. So you balance stuff out like that, because whereas through SMT, you were just constantly fighting and leveling up, the life it's simulator parts of Persona need you to be able to increase your bonds with other characters because they help you get better personas because generally as well the hero in the game is able to use multiple personas whereas your party members use oh, their well. own yeah right somehow we get the multi ability it's just like generic yeah there's usually reasons explained for it i mean even in persona 5 it's explained that the that you are joker a wild card hence therefore oh your ability to you know capture other masks of personas and stuff like that it goes into your into your nature as a wild card um but yeah so I, I like the whole the whole heist aspect of 
of, Four. of Persona 5. Four, five. Royal, but Golden just sort of gets there. You're just a bunch of kids who've realised that, you know, someone got murdered and then one of their friends got murdered, so you want to go and figure it out. You realise that while you're sat there, you know, living your life, this serial killer is going around and basically throwing whoever they don't like to their death. So you want to stop that. And naturally, it takes almost a whole year to do so, but then again, that's the whole point of Persona. Yeah, you have one year. Yeah. But that's... that's I. It's hard to say why I like Golden more than I like other Personas, and maybe 5 Royal in particular. I mean, and I've watched a lot of Persona 5 Royal at the moment because I'm editing the Better Together series for it, so oh. I I can absolutely see it. I guess... One of the few games I've played that's in that realm is the Duncan Romper and the Catherine. Mm, yeah. I... I guess more on the, the thing on this is, you know, like I mentioned right at the beginning of this, I said that I played Persona 4 Golden and not Persona 4. Mm. I, have you, with you playing Catherine, have you played Catherine, the the reboot, the name escapes me? Catherine Classical? No. no Catherine Classic is the, is the original. The original. I've only played the original, I think. So, Catherine Full Body? So, you know, it's, it's basically the same game, but they've introduced new elements and stuff like that that, you know, give it some quality of life and sort of a new storyline and stuff like that. Maybe this is probably what I don't like about Persona 5, because I played the original. And I cocked up, I didn't stack a save, that's my fault. And therefore I couldn't get past the second boss without game overing, so I'd have to start again. And then I'm looking, I'm looking at Andrea and Duncan playing the Royal, and it is a vastly improved game. Mm. simple quality of life improvements like characters in Persona 5 get guns but their their ammo their ammo is limited and in Persona 5 it's limited per time you're in the dungeon in Persona 5 Royal the ammo is limited per fight so you regenerate your ammo after every fight and a lot of for me it felt like a lot of early demons in the game were weak to gunfire and not much else so when you're sat there losing your ability to actually do simple combat in it, it puts me off. Uh. It does. And, I mean, I I guess so far I haven't got many characters that I can sort of get with and sympathise in Persona 5, because I've not, like I said, I've not played it much. Your two characters that you get there are um, Ryuji, who's who's like a track star who got his leg broken by his sinister high school volleyball coach teacher. And is a right old sexual abuser, and you know, okay, yeah, I can understand that. And the other character on that is is on, and um, she, the one with the glasses. No, no, on is not the one with the glasses. Oh no, we're talking I'll about like five talk. here still. Oh five, okay, I have no idea. Um, on like this quarter quarter American, you know, gymnast. No, she's not a gymnast at all. Who am I on about? But she, she's basically. She ends up being this volleyball teacher's main squeeze, but because he's forcing her to, otherwise her best friend won't be on the volleyball team, and later down the line she attempts suicide. This is dark subject matter. I should say, for as bright and colourful as Persona games are, Mm. they deal with dark subject matter. Abuse, domestic violence, um, gender identity. Cover all sorts. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that goes on this. I mean, in, in, in Persona 4, you got a punk-looking guy who's sort of... It's insinuated that the reason he goes all punk and hard ass is because he's secretly gay. Mm. And, on the, and on the other hand, you've got this sort of young high school detective who everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's great. Oh, he's so great. Blah, blah, blah. He's this, he's that. They're female. On the idea that if they... If they sit around going around saying that they're a female detective, they won't take them seriously and just like, oh, you're just a girl. Mm. So, you know, that all comes up. But yeah, overall, Persona 4, good game. And because of, like I say, the the, com- the combination of actually empathising with the characters in the sin- situation and um, not having a pimp daddy as your guardian. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. 
Um, yeah, that's that's Eagle my reason. Looks, yeah, and Igor looks as angry as ever. Uh, Igor's not. It's weird. He's not angry. It's, it's just a weird grin, giant nose, and constantly bloodshot eyes. It can make him look like he's an angry person, but no, he's he's there for you at heart. Yeah, um, he's the concierge. Effectively, the concierge of of personas. Yeah. The vel- uh, the vel- of the Velvet Room, which in Persona 4 is a limo. Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, so it's like Velvet Persona- Room is a, basically a weird space. Yeah, it's the idea of apparently the way that the Velvet Rooms are, is it sort of explained somewhere, the, the, the room adapts based on the, the, the needs of the person who signed the contract or the inner heart of those who signed the contract. So therefore, like Persona 4, I guess the the sort of the limo is the fact that the constant the characters constant moving around whenever they're um I'll try that again when there isn't a dick with a loud ass engine. Uh, you said moving around a lot. Yeah. So yeah, it is. It's like the, yeah, the the limo sort of manifests for him moving around a lot. Persona Fives, the the kid in that is basically on probation for for pushing a what later down the line I know as a, a politician. Who's a, a bit of a dick, but is powerful. So his his velvet room is that of a prisoner, who feels that they're constantly chained up and they need to break away from all that. Mm. But um, yeah, it messes with the psyche a lot. Yeah, that's just how they 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 operate. I mean, like I say, Persona came out in the West, most most known as initially with number three as the game where people shoot themselves in the head to get their personas out. Yep. Which it, then never happens again in the series because Persona Four, you throw cards, and Persona Five, you got masks. Yeah, but yeah, it's the the fear response was meant to be the th- explanation for the shooting themselves in the head. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas whereas Persona Four is confronting your confronting your true self, and um, Persona Five is unleashing the rebel be- women. Mm. It's like no, you were always you were you were always there. So well, uh, yeah, that that was me. So D, what about you? Um, like you, I've been playing a bunch of Warframe and Daglock came. Dag, Daglock protocols came out in the last this patch. Yeah, the new semi-story quest. Um, oh yeah, we started to unlock the new Warframe. Protea. That's the one. Um, lol, the new season started up, and we got to go through the TFT ranking again, as we already know. Um, tried a few games. I up over the freaking thing. This one I'm playing right now is called Glass Ma- Masquerade. Glass Masquerade, yes. I saw this while we were just watching you stream I'm it. I'm still playing it as second. we've been doing it. Um, basically you get a, a clock and you've got to make the glass up. It's like a jigsaw puzzle with um, mm-hmm. stained glass windows. So all the okay. pieces are all odd shaped and whatnot. Hmm. Let's and see. Like seen part of it, you know. I didn't see any rotations or anything like that. I just saw you had a load of shattered stained glass pieces and a giant ass board. I think I saw yeah. you like they, they had like a couple of anchor points on the side, little circles. I assume they're like the first five your corners. The first five pieces are your starting. Like the one I'm playing right now is a. It's meant to be an island. Currently at the top. Uh, like the British one, there was a show that comes a big Ben and old timey streetlights. This one's got some kind of pumpkin th- theme going on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's basically, if you like, jig- oddly weird jigsaws that will eventually. Fig- but yeah, you spin the wheel on the outside and you don't see the, the what the piece looks like until you pick it up. But you see a silhouette of it. Yeah, so you see a silhouette, but then you don't know what it is and you don't know where it's going to fit. I see a little silhouette of a piece. Um, I that's... apologize. Please continue. That was that was awful of me. So that's Glass Masquerade. I tried a uh, detective case in the clown bot in Murder in Hotel Lisbon. D- excuse me. Detective case in clown bot in Murder of Hotel Lisbon. It's um. I tried it when I was waiting for you earlier. I couldn't. I lasted about five minutes. I was like, nope. Just no. What the hell? You're a detective sort of deal, but you're in a comedy sketch at the same time. Ah. Uh. So it's a detective that walks around, but it's all the 
graphics are all slides slide thingy in my box. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the the um synopsis for this. As it's on Steam, it's apparently been there for six years. Detective Clayson clown bought in murder in the Hotel Lisbon. A strange murder has occurred in Hotel Lisbon. A man committed suicide with 14 stabs to the back while at the same time he peacefully drank his coffee. What? Yeah, it, it makes no sense. Um, the detective's meant to be a proper detective and the clown bot gets given to him by ex a family member here. The clown bot just makes jokes constantly and ridicules the detective constantly. Mm. But it's very 2D. The graphics was 2D and stuff, and I was like, nope, can't get into this. Uh, pool Panic, I tried. And... That one we could play together if you wanted, Ryan. Oh my god. Ah, I just saw the picture. <laughs> if anyone, you search for Pool Panic on Steam, and my god, it's the world's least realistic pool simulator. Yeah, the, the pool balls have faces and can move around and do stuff. Oh my god, actually, is this the... I think this might be like one of the pool games that's got like Jim Sterling pool ball Not, face but basically yeah you i tried playing it a little bit uh it's got co-op couch on the when i was loading it up mm. uh basically the pool the pool ball you can move wherever you want and you can take whatever shot you want but the pool each ball has its own characteristics that it does it's like one of them runs away from you one of them hides behind something else one does like stomp so each pool ball has got its own little personality that you got to deal with how to pot it and it's not a standard pool table really either. It's all over the fucking place. Basically, you got to try and... Tr but you can put the... You're meant to pot all the balls in there and pot the black last. But the balls can just run around and dodge you and stuff. It's like... Okay, game. Oh, that's mad mental. Uh, yeah, the, and one of the other ones I loaded up, literally... But, yeah, and then... But, no. but yeah, basically... Yeah, but it's basically... I, I installed a bunch of the games from the um, Humble Star thing. Just to try them out. Uh, Tricky Towers was quite fun, actually. And I would say it's a you type, your Martin type game. It's I Tetris. See. It's Tetris and a balancing act all in one. Huh. You have to build a tower up in t with Tetris pieces, and then you have to, it has to be balanced, uh, yes. and you and you have a certain amount of time to get to the, to a certain limit. Mhm. Mm and the pieces are all higgly piggly, and some of them will grow. Because like the little mages on the side will make the pieces do stuff, so one of the pieces just fall down and then suddenly turn huge, like. And if it hits the tower and it's your tower is not stable, it'll just collapse your tower. So it's tricky towers. It's basically it's, it's tricks us with a challenge. Mm. Uh, the other one is the puts a little beam in, and you get given a limited amount of pieces, and you have to make them fit a very particular way. Because if you go over the line, it's game over. So some modes, it's build as tower as high as possible. Others, it's build it in the most confined spaces that you can. Mm -hmm. With a certain amount of pieces. So if, it's one of those if you like puzzle, Tetris and puzzle games. Not that bad. You know, if you want a bit of a challenge. Because mm -hmm. you've got to figure out the balancing and all that stuff. You can't just mm -hmm. build a tower and then expect it to stay. It'll build a tower and pray that you put the places in the right place. And if one of the t pieces starts wobbling or something, it's like, oh, no, 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 oh, let's start that again. So you basically have played a bunch of little mini-game things that I've tried. Mm. Glass Masquerade and Tricky Tower seems to be the two that I don't mind. I've actually spent some time playing the ones I've played. Okay. But if we ever want to play Plow Panic, we can play it as a together thing. A cop. Is. Cope. Uh, couch co-op or whatever the fuck it's called. Mm. Part of the remote play together things. Right, so that's a lot of games. Mm. And we've only actually been going for half an hour, but, you know. I don't know, but it's... We got, we got about 15 minutes, I guess, to say, that we could just talk about the PS5. Okay, I haven't really looked into the PS5 too much. Uh, well... Oh, look, the PS4 looks like a... The, the Xbox looks like a giant cube. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, news time. News time. There we go, just something to give me the bit to put in. So, yeah, mm -hmm. back way back when. I uh, don't fully remember when. Yeah, last year there was the Atari-looking thing. 
Mm. But the PS5 was going to look like the one of yeah. the trees of things it's going to look like in the old Atari. Except it didn't turn out to be that case. Didn't it turn out to look, look like a modem as well? No, we'll, we'll, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. So, yeah, to rewind a bit, God, what podcast number was it that we talked about the Xbox One X? My God, it was last year at some point. We don't know yep. what podcast it was. We were talking about the P- the Xbox One Series X, XX. I think we covered it over a couple, but... Yeah, because I think there was that one time where we introduced us as versions of the Xbox. Yeah, it was pretty... And I think me and, Dunk, me and Darius was having a thing about it because we went technical with things again. Mm. Um, yeah. If you end up with me and Darius, we end up going quite technical because we're both builders. But... Uh... Yeah. So, yeah, we we took the piss out of it. I mean, I'm still on the opinion that an Xbox Series, an Xbox One Series X one box, two-point box, mm. looks like a plant pot. And that opinion has not changed. No. Now the Xbox has come out, you know, with a little bit of stats and vital statistics, and okay, it's a highly powerful plant pot. <laughs> With games and you know that are there for people, there's like going to be the new Halo and and uh, there'll be a new Forza more likely than not, and you know some Xbox exclusives to play on your plant pot. Yeah. So Sony did their reveal on Thursday or this past Thursday. It was supposed to be the Thursday before, but because of all the Black Lives Matters protests, they stopped. They said. It's not worth doing it yet. Because we'll delay it. Yeah. Because it, it'd be stupid of us to do so. Because it'll just get lost in the Black Lives Matter plaza. Well, they, they, yeah, they, they did what a lot of companies did at the time and said, well, it'd be inappropriate. Uh, wow, words. Inappropriate of us to do it mm. during that time. So, one week later and exactly one week later, okay. the, the art of reveal stream. Mm occurred for the Sony PS5 and there were 26 games that were announced as coming on the PS5. Game number one, Grand Theft Auto 5. Be still my beating heart. Wait, still 5? Still 5. Actually, no, I just loaded up the picture now. Yeah, and we will talk about that picture later, but just to, I guess, to give people a preview. The Kyber console. Anyway, as we go along, so there's other, you know, there's other games. There's, from what I briefly saw, there are zero gameplay trailers. And if anyone can tell me that there was actual physical gameplay in there, maybe Deathloop, um, the guys who made uh, Dishonored, uh, uh, Arcane Studios, they're doing a new game called Deathloop. And the idea is that you are a highly skilled assassin who needs to eliminate eight targets before midnight. Um, if he fails to do so or dies along the way, time loops and he has to do it again. Oh, so... So he just, he just keeps looping. A bit like Wyoming's thing. In well, n- n- I guess, but he doesn't have the choice of this. He, he has to take out the uh, the things or he ends up in the time loop and he just keeps going and going. Okay. But yeah, Wyoming can freeze time and da 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 da. Yeah, he's Shot he's the one that learns from his mistakes to do that. But he that's his his power. Yeah, that's the, his this, AI this is well, this assassin well, well, in in yeah this assassin in Deathloop doesn't have the choice, succeed or reset. Does reset. he remember the reset though? Oh, I assume so. Uh, so I guess it's closer to to Edge of Tomorrow. Live, die, the, repeat. Because uh, there is. Games where they do the reset and they don't remember anything. Like... Oh no, they 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 remember because it's in the, it's in the trailer for it. This guy is constantly talking about how he keeps fucking up, but he will succeed eventually. But what the 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 other mechanic on this is that in your games there is a there is another assassin character. She also is stuck in the time loop, but her thing is just to prevent you from killing the targets. Ooh. So Ooh. it's a drop in competitive play. So you're playing through the game and you will be trying to kill these targets. And then I'm guessing at set points during the game, 
someone else can join in as the other assassin whose sole job it is is to kill you. Yep. So which uh, I will be I'll be for me personally if I play that game I'll be looking at the option for people to join into my game which tick the box that says off and uh, yeah. then go about my business. I as much as it's a nice thing I wouldn't like that in there. I mean I like with say I've not played it the new Doom game Doom Eternal. There is an option on that where if you get killed by a demon in the game a stronger version of that demon then gets sent to other players who are currently playing at the time. Okay. So, and that one, that's a bit different because that basically says to you, don't fuck up or else you're making every other person's game harder. Mm. Um, I don't like the sort of, I don't like this idea of, right, I'm just getting about my business or I'm just minding my own business playing this game. Oh, and look, this guy has, by design, fucked up my progress. That's a par- level of paranoia that I don't need to I know, be experiencing. Exactly. I know someone who would love doing that to you. Thing. Yeah. All day long. I, I know I know quite a lot of people in the Immaterial Games who would love doing that to me. I know a lot of people outside of the Immaterial Games who probably love doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, And that's and that's just world worldwide. There are... And I mean, there are people who I don't even know who would love doing that to me. So, um, yeah, so that that's stuff there. There's a new Ratchet & Clank coming out. Yes, please. There yeah, was yeah, a discussion at work of people going, oh, I liked Ratchet & Clank when I was, like, 12. No, it's got that for-all-ages humour that, that sticks. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it happens. I mean, I'm not sad there still talking about how the great gameplay trailer of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which still doesn't have a gameplay trailer yet, don't even try and go, but, but, if I don't, you, I don't if bother you with cannot see... If you cannot see a video of someone playing the game, then there is no gameplay. If you're not seeing HUD elements, UI, images that are actual gameplay, not representative of... Of footage. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 it's the adverts that annoy me when he goes... Not actual gameplay. Game footage. He's like, give me gameplay footage so I have a rough understanding if I'm going to like the twat. Yeah. Case in point. Capcom. It's Bringing out a game called Pragmata. Okay, that sounds fun. There's no, there's no gameplay trailer. You don't even know what fucking type of game it is. This is the trailer. An astronaut walking through what looks like Times Square, scanning objects. The sky shimmers and glitches out a little bit. Makes you feel it might be a dome. But you don't know, you're not quite sure. Astronaut sees crying girl. Goes to her and reassures her. She holds his hand. A satellite crashes through the sky and the astronaut manages to do something to deflect it. The astronaut and the girl look out and they realise that they're on the moon and they're seeing Earth. Title moves on to next game. Uh, uh, I'm just... Let me rage yeah. for a little while. I mean, if I'm looking at the... Wow. I'm looking at the Wikipedia entry for Pragmata. Pragmata is an upcoming video game developed by Capcom set to be le- released in 2022 for the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Microsoft Windows. Wow. I'm not reading there, but that's it. <laughs> Doesn't tell you if it's going to be a... what type it yeah. is, or what... Da, 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 da. I mean, I was one, like, bit on there for them saying pre-order from going into full-on nerd rage. Pre-order what? Pragmata. What yeah. is it? It's an experience. In two years' time, please pre-order. No! No! Not fucking happening. So, yeah, that's that's happened. There's a sequel to Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. It's called Resident Evil Village. Yeah. Where the, the V, the I, and the Ls become number eight. Therefore, telling you it's a mainline sequel and a direct sequel to Biohazard. So it's going to be third person. It's going to start Ethan again, and Chris Redfield's back, and he causes shit. Because um, uh, Biohazard it's, it's... two, the one we played. Biohazard, uh, yeah, Biohazard, yeah, the one that we did for the Spooktober Spectacular. And well, that we did, up... that we did, that we did two thirds of for the Spooktober Spectacular. I think I went through and played it on hard mode like a crazy twat. Yeah, you fool. I, I got halfway. I got to mother. Oh, that's nice. You didn't get to the happy birthday scenario. No. No. To be honest, well, neither, did, 
yeah, neither, neither, neither did I, to be honest. But yeah, so there's those sort of games that came out. There's a Demon Soul remaster that's been picked up by Blue Point, the guys who made Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Um, so that's going to be a weird remaster because it doesn't look like From Software's involved. But yeah, um, but then we move. Yeah, sorry, Dark Souls is one of those. It takes your soul away. Yeah, I remember getting the. Uh, the Demon Souls did, um, Deluxe Edition because you could only get the Demon Souls Deluxe Edition physically mm. in the UK at the time. Uh, it was on the PS3, wasn't it? Yeah. And it came with a fucking walkthrough book that was not worth the paper it was printed on. Well, yeah, out of us, I think I got the furthest into Dark Souls. Like, Oof. I, I don't know how you managed with your brain intact. But, um... Uh, uh, I was going to say lots of coffee, but I don't drink coffee. It's basically a lot of fine, we'll grind this out for a while. Oh, look. Kill now, kill this boss. Yeah. It took like an 100 hours of grinding, though, just to kill the, like, the boss or something. It's like, ugh. Fuck it. Three, like, three bosses, like, oh, shit. I can't. Just no. But, um, what else have they got? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Insomniac games are not only just helping with uh, Ratchet and Clank, but also they're doing a Spider-Man sequel starring Miles Morales from Into the Spider-Verse. Okay. As opposed to your Peter Parker Spider-Man. Uh. Yeah, it's not your daddy's Spider-Man, it's your Gen X's Spider-Man. Uh. I'll be honest, the Miles Morales Spider-Man and in Into the Spider-Verse was fucking awesome, and if you haven't watched it yet, why haven't you? I don't think I have. Then the question is there, why haven't you? Um, there's a there's a game by the makers of Octodad. There's going to be a child friendly game called Bug Snacks um, that involved eating strawberries with eyes. It was terrifying. Okay. Yeah, uh, I kind of vaguely remember. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo is is there as well. Godfall from the uh, Gearbox. Gearbox, doom. I think I might have a few decibels missing from that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, we we don't want to ruin everyone's ears. Um, another Gran Turismo, like we said, Grand Theft Auto Five, the final game in the World of Assassination trilogy. That is Hitman Three. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, they call it the World of Assassination because it's just open world maps as opposed to individual assassination maps. Yeah, but um, yeah, another Horizon game. I thought they were going to call it Horizon Zero Dawn 2, but no, they actually called it Horizon Other title. Horizon I, Forbidden West. I do. I actually don't mind the fact when I've played the Horizon games. They're, they're good. I quite like them. Mm, I've, heard, I've heard they're good. Sackboy, a big adventure. Oh, I heard Sackboy in a while. Yeah. Um, so it's a spin off of Little Big Planet that's just going to be a platformer involving Sackboy. So yay. I've still got my and, little Sackboy sack somewhere nearby. Keychain version uh, of him. Yeah. Uh, but then, then, this is this is what it comes down to. Last couple of minutes, we're going to discuss the console design. Uh, so you've seen you've seen the picture of it. Does yeah. it look like a router to you? A little bit. It does, to be fair. So picture this. Picture that I don't know, there's two ways that you could have a look at this. You could have a look at it as a as a router that is being zipped up by a white plastic bag. Mm. Or you could see it as sort of a console that's being split open to reveal the actual console underneath, but they just stopped. Oh, uh, see, it's trying to be the cool kid and has its uh, flares up, collars up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the reason I called it the Kyber console, by the way, is one of the memes that came out straight away was seeing the virtual uh, the the console in its vertical stand-up, and someone had just photoshopped Kyber's head from Yu-Gi-Oh! on the top of it. So, is. yeah, so it is It is essentially the Kyber console. Kyber Corporation. But, um, yeah, no, so it's a, there's no price for it yet. Um, It'll be a similar... It, they'll probably price it similar to the other one. Yeah, which also hasn't given price and information yet. Um, Play once... One of them figures it out, though. The other one will go, match it, or slightly lower it than the other. Yeah. But what they've done on this as well, by the way, is that they've split it 
Sony, the PS5 is going to come out with two editions from the off. So there's going to be the, the edition with the Blu-ray drive added to it. That's your PS5 standard edition. And then you're going to have the PS5 yeah. digital edition, which has no, no, disc drive. Yeah, there's no disk drive at all. Now, considering at this point that the PS5 is on the intent of being fully backwards compatible with the PlayStation library. How the hell is that going to work? It's not going to work on the digital edition, that's for damn sure. So there's the rumours that the digital edition is going to be cheaper. It's basically a Switch Lite. So like how in a, in a Switch Lite can't be played on your TV. We can only assume that a digital edition PS5 won't be backwards compatible. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 mm. it, they, I can understand if people only want to play the PS5 stuff. Yeah? And they have great internet and are happy in terms of sort of hard drive space, you know, they're only going to be playing the odd few games and they're going to be doing that. Digital edition, straight off. Yeah, I understand completely. That one wouldn't be for me. No. There's, you know, I'm, while I may have been the perpetrator of buying games for different console or different generation consoles that were basically just the same game beforehand, example, Persona 4 Golden, um, mm. You know that 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 can be the case, but don't. don't I don't know. It's less than the choice, I suppose, at that point. Yeah, I guess. Console game. Also, most people you get the PS5, the PlayStation. Its perks thing is the fact that it's um, Blu-ray. Well, yeah. I mean, on that Microsoft caught up. I mean, in terms of Blu-ray versus HD DVD, Blu-ray won massively. So. You know, you've got to think on that, actually, that the old uh, Xbox 360 still use DVDs. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to play Final Fantasy XIII? Uh, there you go. Please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three DVDs, please. I should remember getting Lost Odyssey, and that was four DVDs. Four. I remember cracking a game open, and I saw six. I was like, nope. Oh, wow. Gonna try. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I think that's a, a good like drop off point on that. So if you like all your DVDs, like, share mm. and subscribe. Um that's on one DVD. If you click the bell, particularly if you click the bell that says uh, to be notified for all videos, that's your second DVD. I was gonna say that's the digital deluxe edition. Oh oh you wanna go digital deluxe, okay. Alright. So so what edition would we have then if we asked you to follow the social medias as well, Facebook and the Twitter? That would be the gold edition, of course. Ah, right, okay, so we're going sort of Ubisoft here. Yep. Okay, Um. so then if you also want to listen to the podcast on something that's not YouTube, we've got Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. That, that would be the Immaterial Edition, right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And uh, if you just want to see us next week, and, uh, you know, me... And possibly D and others, or maybe not me. Who knows? Anyone can be here. It's a surprise. That's the loot box edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, if you just pay for that, you open it up. Um, we'll put the odds down in the description below. And uh, until that point, thank you, D. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's us signing off. So bye. Bye.